Welcome back. This is Metropole Business Center, where we bring you the briefs on what is going on in the world of business and economy. And every Thursday, we focus on matters technology. And on this part of the show, we'll be doing a gadget review, but not without starting with some news uh, that has been the talk of basically the rest of the world. And that is the rollout by Apple of its iPhone 12. Apple has introduced four new variants of the iPhone, which are the iPhone 12, uh, 12 mini, 12 Pro, and 12 Pro Max, as well as a new HomePod. And uh, we're getting to discuss that uh, new product. Notably, the iPhone 12 Pro and the iPhone 12 Pro Max have been enabled for the 5G network. 5G on iPhone boosts, uh, boosts uh, improved speeds for faster downloads and uploads, higher quality video streaming, more responsive gaming, real-time interactivity in apps, FaceTime in high definition, and much more. And customers will also be able to enjoy a secure, fast connection that reduces the need to connect to public Wi-Fi hotspots. The iPhone 12 Pro models also introduced a new uh, LiDAR scanner for immersive augmented reality experiences and MagSafe, which offers high-powered wireless charging and an all-new ecosystem of accessories that easily attach to iPhone. Uh, Apple also teamed up with Corning to create a new special type of glass that is four times less likely to break um, than, iPhone 11, um, than iPhone 11 if the phone accidentally falls off. The phones come with a new A14 Bionic chipset and iOS 14 with storage varying from 64 to 512 gigabytes. Now, let's just begin with a review of that, and I'm joined here by Joe Wanjara, who is our resident analyst on Matters Technology. Welcome, Joe. Thank you so much for having me once again. Very well. So t today, we we like to sort of take a slight tangent. We have a different device that we'll be reviewing shortly, yeah. but still from the iPhone family. But let's begin with this new offering that uh, Apple has brought into the market. Uh, what are your overall views about it? The iPhone 12 series. Um, in my opinion, I feel like it's just an iPhone 11 rebranded to iPhone 12, and then they just added 5G. Because if I'm looking at the spec sheet, there's, there really isn't much change. I feel like somebody who has an actual iPhone 11 or 11 Pro Max really doesn't have a reason to upgrade. iPhone 11 is actually good enough, and um, I'm still I'm still wondering why they actually had to launch this with barely anything to talk about apart from the fact that it has 5G. I think that's the I think that's the only thing new that they introduced here that is a wow factor. But you know, it's actually it's 5G is something that phones have been having since um, early last year. Very well. Yeah. But I've, I've just mentioned that. Um, other than that, we're also talking about the accessories. Are mm -hmm. those ac I mean, what are those other accessories that? probably have come with the iPhone 12? Actually, they've reduced the accessories. Um, they actually, they've omitted their, their charger. They're saying that, um, you know, most people who already have iPhones already have the charging, um, the charging cables. So they, they, they didn't see the need to add another one because most iPhone users already have those. They also say that that's because um, of environmental issues. They are trying to, you know, conserve the environment by not producing most of these charging cables. But um, what is an issue for me is the fact that um, they introduce super fast charging with the iPhone 12, but these cables, they really cannot support super fast charging. So somebody who actually wants that kind of fast charging will have to go and buy this accessory at an Apple store, and that is, you know, extra cost for you. It goes for around 7,500 Kenyan shillings. Okay. Yes. And what are we talking about in terms of the price tag of the, the, the iPhone 12 uh, Pro, Pro Max? Well, um, in terms of prices, um, they, have, they, have a, they have a lineup of four phones, like we had mentioned last, uh, last time. We have the iPhone 12 mini, that one goes for around 70,000. We have the iPhone 12, goes for 80,000. And then we have the iPhone 12 Pro that goes for 100,000, and then the iPhone iPhone 12 Pro Max that goes for 110,000. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the iPhone 12 Mini was actually supposed to be the budget phone, but you know, in terms of you know the Kenyan standards, um, 70,000 is still a lot of money 
for a budget entry phone because here in Kenya most most budget phones go for around you know 10 to 15000 Kenya shillings so uh, i'm really i'm really not sure <laughs> the target audience with 12 but I, i'm not sure if they um, they consider the african market with that price tag all right yeah so let's now turn to the gadget that we are reviewing today and that's a different iphone model the iphone se uh, mm -hmm. let's begin with an overview of yeah. the iphone se the iphone se i feel like the iphone se is actually um a better phone to suggest for you know the kenyan market it's um it's a it's a very light phone um very compact exactly the same body of the iphone 8 uh -huh. just new internals um they replaced um they replaced the chipset with um the a13 bionic chipset that you find on the iphone 11 pro um but then everything else is sort of the same as what you'd find on an up on an iphone 8 except they improve some sectors like the camera system and, and stuff like that yeah very well how how is performance performance is actually excellent because um with 3gb of ram and and the a13 bionic chipset um the, uh, the performance is almost just as good as what you'd find on an iphone 11. so <laughs> performance is actually excellent mm, what about yeah. the battery life how long can it last well ad as advertised they're saying this the battery life will quite will last um, quite some time, and I want to agree with them because they're making both the the, um, the hardware and the software, so they know how to um, optimize the iOS um, 13 that is on the on the SE to consume consume you know battery in a way that is not going to be too much. But in terms of milliamp, it's a uh, 1,821 milliamp for battery, which is fair enough for the price tag. Uh, yes. How about its camera setup? It has a single camera setup both on the front and the back. Um, it's a 12 megapixel on the front and a 7 megapixel on the back. Sorry, I, I said it um, the other way around. It's a 7 megapixel selfie camera and a 12 megapixel um, main camera on the back. Um, actually a really good camera. Um, the photo quality is what you'd expect from an Apple brand. From, a, from an Apple brand, sorry. Um, the only issues is with low lighting. It doesn't have um, night mode, so when you're shooting in low light, you will experience some sort of grains on your on your pictures. But other than that, it's a very decent camera, especially if you're shooting um, in a place where there's too much light or during the day, you're going to get excellent photos. It also supports 4K video recording, also has high dynamic range. The only issue is, you know, it doesn't have um, night mode and doesn't have very excellent zooming capabilities yeah. so, so so are we looking are we, are we looking here at probably using the phone mm -hmm. as a means of payment you know because I'm, I've, I've seen that technology being introduced by some banks where you you know you probably just need a card put it near a point of sale and the communication happens is, is that is that probably what iphone the iphone i see here um is meant also to be used for yeah sure sure if you put it that way now that would be better explained um Yes, the iPhone has um, a feature called NFC, which is actually is a feature for you know premium brands. But uh, I was actually impressed that they added it in the iPhone SE. So basically, you can just tap and pay because of the near field um, range between whatever your between your device and the gadget you're you're using to transfer the money to. So yes, it actually supports NFC. Mm -hmm. Yes. Let's look at the price tag around mm -hmm. the iPhone SE. Yeah. How much is it going for? It goes for um, around 33 Kenya shillings if you're buying 33, the 33,000. Yes, 33,000 Kenya shillings, sorry. Um, if you're buying the 64 GB variant variant. Okay. Yeah. Um do, do, do you think that's value for that that device? Yes. Yes. As far as an Apple device is concerned, 33,000 is actually a very good value for money. And um, I was trying to look at why they would price it that way, and the pricing actually made sense. You see, what they decided to do was take the body of an iPhone 8 and then just replace the internals. So this sort of reduces the cost of production because they've already streamlined the, the production of the iPhone 8. If they were to introduce a new feature or try and thin out the the bezels on the front on the top and the, on the on the 
on the bottom, it will increase the cost of production in that it will need new research, new technology, new tools, new manufacturing process, and this will um, eventually increase the cost of production and it will make the phone a bit expensive. So the fact that they went with the body of an iPhone 8 is the reason why the cost is as low as it is. Okay. Yes. Uh, let's look at the, co the cons mm. around this phone. Yeah. W which, which ones would you point out? Um, the cons, I would say, you know, this is, this is, uh, this is iPhone, so <laughs> as much as there are cons, you sort of understand why they're there. I would say um, they got most of the things right, um, but uh, they're not as good. They're, they're just decent enough for this price range. Something like um, the battery, not the best, but it's good enough. The speaker, not the best, but it's good enough. Um, the camera setup as well. Um, the screen, you get an LCD 720 instead of um, a full HD 1080p display, which is decent enough. Okay. Yes. So I think, I think the con is that you know, they just have decent features, but really not the best. But you understand that because of the price tag. Um, but one thing they, you know, they omitted was the higher refresh rates. So uh, this one has 60 hertz instead of 90 or 120 that will make the phone you know, look smoother. And that is actually something they also omitted on the, uh, on the new iPhone 12 series. It doesn't have high refresh rates, and that was something people were wondering why they omitted, yes. So finally, would you recommend the iPhone SE? The iPhone SE, totally. Most definitely, I would recommend the iPhone SE. Mm -hmm. It's actually a very solid device. For anyone who's looking to get into the iPhone, the iOS ecosystem, the Apple ecosystem, um, the iPhone SE is a better choice as opposed to the iPhone 12 mini because of the price tag. Um, to anyone using you know, iPhone 6 or iPhone 6 Plus, which is a lot of Kenyans, I would prefer you upgrade to the iPhone SE because it has a better camera, um, an updated chipset, and uh, iOS 14, sorry, 13, which is decent, mm -hmm. yes. Well, let's see whether you recruit uh, disciples to the, <laughs> <laughs> to the iPhone, the world of iPhones. I really hope I do. Very well. Yes. Thanks a lot, Joe. It's always a pleasure speaking with you on Matters Tech as we review the yeah. gadgets that are coming into the market. Thank you for having me once again. Very well. And indeed, it's, it's been a pleasure hosting this show, the Metropole Business Center, where we've been uh, discussing matters around technology. Earlier, we spoke with Marcin Degua, who is the Chief Operations Officer at AR Insurance. And uh, just moments ago, we were reviewing the iPhone SE, which is also in the market. And indeed, it's uh, said to be an equivalent of the iPhone 11, uh, which was just before the launch uh, yeah, when is this launch of the iPhone 12 series? And that's where we'll leave it today on Metropole Business Center. My name is Stephen Kimani. This is Metropole TV, Kenya's 24-hour business channel. Do enjoy the rest of your viewing on Metropole TV.